Okay, so let's uh, let's start talking about how we actually put our knowledge into practice. So, so how do we actually run a molecular dynamic simulation? Uh, in this case, using LAMP. So, what is LAMP? So, LAMP uh, stands for Large Scale Atomic Molecular Massively Parallel Simulator, and so it's available from Sandia National Lab. That's where it's currently developed. Um, if you go to lamp.sandia.gov, you will see this uh, homepage here with this sort of animation up here. Um, and then you can look at all these links and actually look at the manual, download the code, look at user groups, things like this. It's actually very friendly to use. Um, so where did it come from? It was born in the mid-90s as a cooperation between Sandia National Lab, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Cray Computer Company, Crystal Myers Squibb, and DuPont. Um, and so it was actually this sort of combined academic industrial um, partnership that they wanted to make a molecular simulator because, you know, National Labs are interested in it for various things. Uh, Bristol Myers Squid is probably interested in it for drug design and DuPont for materials chemistry. And so it started there, but it's now developed exclusively um, at Sandia under Department of Energy funding, which is great because it means that the Department of Energy tells Sandia they have to make it freely available to everybody. And so we can download it and use it ourselves. And so it's a, it's a really nice uh, program that, that is supporting labs to the state. And so I don't know what language is originally written in, probably Fortran, but the current release is in C++ and you get some parallelism from it um, using MPI. And so it's completely open source. And so if you're a Cracker Jack programmer and you want to sort of make the code do some fancy stuff, um, you can download the source and actually modify it. And actually that's one of the ways that LAMP is now developed um, today across the world. There's a big user base. Uh, people will add functionality and sort of send it to Sandia and Sandia will incorporate it into the new releases of the code. And so that's great because it means that there's new functionality coming online all the time to do more and more things. And so it's freely available under the, uh, the GPL license. Okay, so how do we install it? Um, so it's actually not too hard to install if you want to do that. And so you can navigate to sandia.gov slash download um, and there's some very nice instructions and lots of links. And so you can install whatever, whatever uh, operating system you have. So Linux is easiest, Mac is pretty easy, Windows is a little tougher, but it does work. Um, and actually you can download pre-compiled executables um, from various places. And so actually I think for standard re uh, releases of Windows operating systems, you can actually just download the EXE directly. If you're running sort of Ubuntu uh, Linux or something like that, you can go to the package manager and actually just download LAMP um, and it'll work straight out of the box. Um, if you do want to compile everything from source, that's actually not too difficult either. And so the instructions are here, and I can, I can help you if, if that's something you want to do. The documentation is great. And so if in the course of you know, anything I say or in the course of the walkthrough of the project, you stumble across something that you actually don't understand or you find interesting, you can always go to the manual and look up a little more information about it. And so the manual is right here. Um, you can also navigate to it from the main page. There's also a bunch of introductory tutorials, and so I'm going to give you some tutorials, but if you want more or you want them for different systems, you can navigate to How To, um, and that will give you some links to tutorials that you can work through on your own time to, to do some, perhaps some more advanced things. Um, and if you really get stuck, you can ask me, um, or if I really get stuck, what I sometimes do is go to the user forum. And so there's actually a very active forum, and people will post questions, say, you know, I had this problem, or I want to do this particular thing. Does anyone know how to do that? And it's actually very friendly and people respond very quickly. Um, and so you can use that as a resource, the, the sort of mailing list. Um, if you run through all of these tutorials and you want to do some more, there's actually really good third party tutorials hosted by Mississippi State University. And so if you go to this link right here, there's some great um, sort of walkthroughs and how to's there about how to use LAMP simply for sort of materials engineering actually. Um, so it's got a sort of ICME or a CMSE flavor. And so that, that's really good for us. Um, so how well does it work? Uh, it works great. And so it's extremely fast, efficient, and scalable. So a lot of the development time and effort goes into making this thing really, really quick, um, meaning that you can simulate for a really long time and simulate really big systems. And so a lot of this comes from MPI parallelism. So that's parallelism between CPU cores. And so you can have your big Beowulf cluster, or you can have blue waters, and you can parallelize a single simulation among many, many compute nodes. And we also have GPU CUDA support. And so that came online pretty recently, meaning that LAMPS is smart enough to actually farm out parts of the calculations to GPU cards. So if your computer comes with a GPU card, you can do a bunch of the calculations on that. Um, and that can give you good speed ups. Um, and so what I'm showing you here is sort of the weak scaling parallel efficiency. And so if you do any sort of computer science and parallel, 
and you want to understand how well your algorithm performs. There's two types of scaling. There's strong scaling, which means you fix the problem size and just throw more and more compute power at it. And how quickly do you get speed ups? And then there's weak scaling, which is that you keep the problem size per core fixed um, and see how that scales as you add more and more cores. And that's why I'm showing you right here that we're, um, we're simulating 32,000 atoms per processor, and then we're just adding more and more processors. And so by the time you get out to 64,000 processors, you're actually simulating 2 billion atoms. So this is a ginormous simulation all the way out here. And I'm showing you the parallel efficiency, which says how well does it do for this enormous problem out here um, compared to a single core problem out here. And so basically you're, you're staying stable around 80 or 90%. And so if you have 64,000 cores, it turns out you can do a 2 billion atom simulation of copper in about 15.4 seconds. And so that's incredible. And so this thing is really, really quick. Okay, so how does it run? Um, so basically we will use a single line that we will type into the terminal to make it run, the same way that we did with Quantum Espresso. So we had like pw.x, input file, output file, that was it. So all the exciting stuff happens in the input and the output files. And so it's very similar for LAMP. So we'll write one command into the terminal and all the magic will happen based on what we feed it from the input file. So basically it boils down to, we need to understand the input script. And so the run initialization and control, so all the ingredients, so the positions of all the atoms and their initial velocities, the potential functions, saying how they talk to one another and how you want to integrate it are all gonna be built into this input script. And then we call the single line, which is basically Lampson executable, feed it the input script, and then it goes. Um, so there's no GUI similar to Quantum Espresso. Everything is based on the terminal. And so that means there's no sort of fancy buttons to click and press with your mouse. Um, but it's actually very, very easy and it makes things very efficient because you can, like we've seen before, use bash scripts to run a bunch of jobs in series. Um, and so we can gain all the efficiencies that we now have because we're all bash experts. Um, if you really like GUIs, somebody has developed a Python GUI, and so you can go to this link here, and you can actually download a little GUI that I think works on top of it. And so I don't necessarily recommend it. I don't think there's much to be gained from it, but it does exist. Um, so this is an example of the input file. And so we, in the walkthrough, we will go through exactly what all this stuff means. It looks kind of intimidating the first time you see it, but it's actually really very friendly. It's broken into blocks, similar to Quantum Espresso, and all the keywords that, that LAMP uses to understand what you're trying to tell it to do are very informative. And so, you know, units, boundary conditions, atom style, create the box, it, it's all pretty accessible. And so once you understand one input script, basically you can write your own very, very quickly. Okay, so the anatomy of a simulation. And so ignore this green stuff on the, on the, uh, your right, uh, just look at the stuff on the left. So basically what we need is an input file and a potential function. And so we write the input file ourselves, we get the potential function from somewhere. Typically NIST is a good place to look for these and we'll actually practice downloading one ourselves. You then feed it to the LAMPS executable. LAMPS executable runs, it sort of churns on your machine and then it's gonna spit out an output file. If you have access to a supercomputer, you can use job schedulers to do something called batch scripting and actually um, send your job to Blue Waters, it will execute and then it will come back to your local machine. Uh, we're not going to worry about that, but that does exist. So then you have your output files. Typically there's a log file, and we'll create a bunch of dump files, which actually contain your molecular dynamic trajectory. And then we need to do a post-mortem on that. So we actually need to analyze the results of our in silico experiment. And so we can visualize them. We can use MATLAB to pick apart all the atomic coordinates, evaluate the forces, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and so the visualiz engi visualization engine we're going to use is called Ovito. And so this is a third-party application that I've also installed for you. Um, that we're going to use to visualize the lamp trajectory. Okay, so basically it's just two input files, you need an executable to run, and then we have some output files that come out the back end. So very simple. Um, and I've installed this executable for you and installed this visualization engine for you on these, on these machines. If you want to install them yourself, like I said, it's pretty easy. Go ahead and give it a shot um, and come ask me and I can help you if you have some problems. Okay, so visualization. LAMPS contains no built-in visualization problem, but visualization is really important for, for very many reasons. So the first reason is sort of a sanity check. So you think you're simulating something, but how do you know? Maybe you just made an error in your input file. 
your unit cell contained five atoms when you thought it contained four. Um, you thought you were simulating a protein that had 52 residues, and then you visualize it and it only contains 12, and you don't know what happened. And so it's a very important thing to just check you're doing what you think you're doing. Um, it's good for error diagnosis. So if your simulation is going crazy or it's exploding, um, actually visualization can help you see why. Maybe you can see that there's one atom that has a very high velocity that's causing problems, for example. It gives you a good overview of the structure and dynamics. And so this is taken again from Klaus Schulten's group. I believe this is a viral capsid. And so by visualizing it, you can actually see, you know, humans are very good at pattern recognition. And so you can actually see what's happening in an intuitive way. You can see whether solvent molecules are clustering or penetrating through the, through the shell, or if there's any sort of structure in the interior. And that might guide you to more quantitative analyses that you might do using your trajectory. Um, it can also guide and inform what's happening that's important or what might need some extra work. Um, and perhaps the most practical answer, it's required any time you write a paper or give a presentation or write a lab report, you probably are going to make a picture at some point. And so if you're doing molecular dynamic simulations, one of the big bonuses that we have over experimentalists is that we can make awesome movies like we just saw. We can add sound to them, and that makes people really excited. Um, so like I said, we're going to use a particular package called Ovito. Um, it stands for Open Visualization Tool. Um, a number of other packages exist. VMD is the one that's um, developed here at Illinois that goes along with Klaus Schulten's NAMD molecular dynamics package. So NAMD is the molecular dynamic simulator. VMD is a visualization engine, and they play well together very um, – and so you can, you can take a look at that. It's free. For LAMPs, it turns out Obito plays really well with LAMPs, and so it's just sort of seamless. You can take the output of a LAMP. Um, run and you can dump it immediately into Ovito and the visualization will happen sort of perfectly. So that's why we're using that and it's also free. Um, so for Linux, Mac, and Windows, you can go to ovito.org if you're interested and download it for your for your personal machine. But I've also installed it on the on the on the EWS system. And so we're going to look at things like this. And so basically, this is a crystal which has some sort of slip defects along it, so, so it sort of um, caused some some uh, uh, stacking faults in the crystal. And so you can visualize all the atoms in the crystal, and you can ask Ovito to color the atoms based on, you know, how much stress they're feeling or um, what their, sort of their local crystal environment is. So it's a very powerful package, and we're going to use this a lot in the walkthrough and in the, in the project. Um, okay, so that's all I had to say on the praxis of labs. Um, so just to give you an overview of what we're going to do right now, which is to start the, start the walkthrough. Um, so any questions on anything, anything we covered there? Okay, great. So let's uh, let's start taking a look at the the walkthroughs. 